Well, hey folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. It's early spring here on my homestead, and uh, I was just out doing some work in my yard, and I've had people come and ask me, or ask me online, you know, to show you around my place and just what projects I'm working on and that sort of thing. So I thought I'd just give you a quick walk around, tell you what projects I'm planning on working on this year, uh, maybe give you some interest in doing some projects around your own places, something like that. So let me come on along and I'll just show you around my homestead a little bit. Okay, so this is my property here, and it is about just under an acre. And this is uh, part of my family's old homestead. And where this came from is my grandfather was one of the first white homesteaders in this area, back when this was all Indian land. Then after they, uh, the Indian tribes were put on the reservations, they opened this up to homesteading, and he moved up here with his family, 11 kids, and they homesteaded in this area, and he had about 200 acres. Over time, they split, he split that off to his family, his kids, and stuff like that, and my dad ended up with uh, a little over 20 acres of the property, and uh, I grew up in a cabin, which is, you can't really see it from here, but back there is the cabin. It's like a 20, 20 by uh, 20 by 20 foot cabin that I grew up in. Now that property is my brother's property, my older brother property, uh, it, and uh, we all inherited a piece of property. He inherited the old old homestead, and I inherited this one acre piece of property because I didn't want anything a lot bigger than that. And uh, I also share with him the 15 acres that's back there if we want to raise horses and cattle and stuff like that. So this is my piece of property. And let me tell you, it did not look anything like this when I moved here. Uh, this place had been, my, after my father passed away, uh, the family kind of um, moved all around to find jobs and stuff like that. So we all moved away from the place, and the place just got absolutely overgrown. And uh, this was originally a horse pasture, but over time it had been filled in. You can see these, these Russian olive trees had just grown in here thicker than thick. And this whole property was just full of these Russian olive trees, they'd just taken over. They're like a big weed, and they're full of stickers, and they're nasty trees. And so one of the first things I had to do is go through with a chainsaw and cut down a whole bunch of those. And you can see a pile of them still back there that I need to get rid of. So I had to do that, and then this whole front area through here was just full of sagebrush and weeds. And so I got this, I found this old lawnmower at a yard sale for like five bucks, fixed it up, and I would take that lawnmower out and I would just set it on top of sagebrushes and grind them down to the stumps until I finally got rid of all, all of the sagebrush. Now, back when my folks uh, ran this uh, homestead, they actually did quite a bit of farming. They raised cattle and sheep and, and uh, all kinds of different animals, pigs and chickens and all that sort of stuff. So it was a working homestead back then. And uh, the water was just come through ditches. In fact, my folks helped dig most of the ditches in this area for all their neighbors and everybody else. Some of the old ditches like that still run across the property. So I've got a ditch that runs along the front of my property where I get water uh, occasionally all through the summer as my neighbors uh, irrigate their farms. Then they let the excess water runs down. This is a runoff ditch. And the water runs down this ditch. And then what I do, because I don't have enough land to get uh, water rights here uh, for agriculture, uh, it cost too much. So what I do is I get that free water and I use a pump with a solar panel and I just pump out of that ditch whenever there's water down there and that's how I water my front area here. And I just been out this morning, I've been mowing this all down. I got the first mow of the season out and you know us old guys, we love to mow our lawns. There's old Tazzy, she's looking for mice. Say hi Tazzy. She finds mice in that ditch so she thinks that's pretty cool. So I got a little step bridge there. And then I built this uh, fence. I'm pretty proud of this fence. I built this out of 4x4 four four treated posts, and then I got those uh, landscaping timbers. I got a good deal on those because I bought a whole bunch of them. And so I got those landscaping timbers, and I put in this three-rail fence along there. That was one of the first things I did, and uh, just kind of makes the place look nice. A little footbridge there. And then, uh, let's see, across the property. That's my neighbor's place over there. Uh, real good neighbor. Him and I get along real well. It's always good to have good neighbors you get along with. And uh, coming up to the place. Now you could see that I've got a blacktop road. Now when we lived here when I was younger, this was all dirt road. There's nothing here but dirt road in here. And uh, this place did have power on it. Because this place, I traded my brother for his piece of property. Because mine was over there. I traded him for his piece of property. Uh, and at the time, I thought I was going to hook in and build a regular house with grid power. And you can see there is power lines and power poles along the road. And there was a transformer up there. But when I went to start building, they told me that the only way I could hook up into the power was to build a traditional house and go jump through all the hoops and build according to code and stuff like that. Well, I just didn't have the money to do that. 
So I never hooked into the grid, and because I didn't, eventually they came and took the transformer off of that pole. I think that was kind of a snub to me. Well, if you're going to live off-grid, then you don't need a transformer. So you took the transformer off the pole, and they, uh, however, they did come in just this last, uh, two, about two years ago, they came in and they put uh, water and uh, underground cable system along the road. Now, I never hooked into it because I've got my own water well. And most of the people up here have their own water well. So, I'll, you know, it was kind of just a future thing if somebody ever wanted to build a regular house on here. I do have water that I could connect into city water, but why pay them for water when I get free water from my well? So that was kind of ridiculous. Oh, there's my chickens over there. Let me zoom in. Now, these are my chickens, and they're over in the neighbor's yard. <laughs> And uh, I've got, uh, right now I've just got two chickens, which is more than enough eggs for me. Because I'm living here by myself, except when the girlfriend comes up on the weekends. So that's a little Bantam. Bantam, and these are both hens. There's the other one sitting over there. Let's see if I can get a picture of her. She's over there. And then, uh, let's see, I put her a nice gate. got to have gates on your property around here because people move their cattle around a lot. Not just for protection, but you want to close your gate, otherwise you'll end up with somebody's cattle or horses running up in your property, which happened a few times here, and tearing up your place. So I've got a nice metal gate I put on there, uh, and then just around here, let's see. Now I'm really an outdoorsman, so I, I, I have a Jeep and a, and a couple of trucks, and uh, those are that's a four-wheel drive one there. That's a two-wheel drive that doesn't get ver use very much gas that I drive most of the time. Uh, but when I'm going up in the mountains, that's my baby right there. That's my Jeep. And Taz and I will get in that and, and go adventuring. And so I love that. Back up here a little bit. So you can see it. And then you can see my solar panels there. Now, my cabin is 14 by 14. I built this completely myself. Let's see, I moved here back here in 2003. Before that, I lived in a, a camper, a small camper off-grid right here. And then I lived in that for three or four years, and then I uh, lived in a 40-foot RV off-grid uh, right here. But I could not keep the dang thing. We get cold winters here, and I just could not keep them uh, campers warm, no matter what. Even with wood stoves and everything else, it was just too cold. So I decided I better build something. So I built this cabin, and it's 14 by 14 cabin. I built this 100% by myself, with my own two hands, uh, for uh, under $2,000. That's just for the cabin. I built the cabin for under $2,000. Back around 2008, I think, is when I built it and started living in it. And uh, so I've been in the cabin now for a little over 10 years. And I've, originally I had my solar panels up there on the roof. A lot of people remember that. But it got to be a lot big problem getting out there because I had to shimmy out the window and then I had to sh shovel the snow off because the snow would build up on that. And it got kind of dangerous. And I also went to better panels and better systems because at that time all, I, I was buying mixed match panels and used panels, whatever I could find in order to operate my system. Over time, I was able to finally afford and invest in some good panels. This is my 400 watt power system. It uh, uh, powers everything in my cabin. Uh, and I use three deep cycle AG uh, VMX batteries, 150 amp hour batteries, and an MPPT power controller. And usually by 10 o'clock, if the sun's shining at all, my batteries are completely full. So, you know, that system powers up everything. And, and I decided to move it down on the ground uh, because a ground mount system is just so much easier to take care of, I can tell you, than a roof system. If I need to do maintenance on this, for one thing, when I come out in the morning, I just use my uh, truck snow brush and I brush the snow off. It takes about two minutes to, to clean them up and brush off all the snow. And then I just got, anchor, got them anchored to some cement blocks and a pressure treated wood with some wire around them to hold them in place. And I use one of my old horse mounting hitches rails here to mount on the back side. And then the wiring, I go with 12 volt wiring. Uh, you could go with 24 volt wiring, which uh, then you don't have to use quite as heavy a, a gauge wire. I go with 12 volt because the reason is if you go with a 24 volt system and you, met, well, you put panels in series, if one of those panels goes out or, or loses power for some reason, has a short or something like that, then every panel in that series goes down. With a 12 volt separate series system like I have here, if one panel goes down, the other three are going to still keep on working. And so I probably wouldn't even notice it if one of the panels went, went down with my system. Uh, but that's the reason that I went with a 12 volt system. But if you're running it over more than 25 feet, my system is just about 25 feet. If you have to run it more than 25 feet, then you probably want to go with a 24 volt system. You can use lower gauge wire and you can run it a longer distance that way. 
Uh, it's all up to you. Either one, they both produce the same way. It doesn't matter whether you use 24 or 12 volt. The only difference is that it reduces the size of gauge wire that you need if you use a 24 volt system. You're still going to have to convert it probably back into 12 volt unless you've got your batteries hooked up for 24 volt. And, you know, if you're running 12 volt in your house, why do you want to have to do all that conversion? So for me, it was just a matter of simplification. And that's one of the things I've really done around my place is try to simplify everything. So there's old Taz. She's sitting on the porch. Now my porch, I, I really am trying to clean up my porch. But I seem to tend to collect stuff as I'm working on it. So you can see I've got my generator there. And like I said, this is a 14 by 14 cabin. And uh, then I've got a little 8 by 8 shed out there. And then this is the couch I just took out of my house. I'm trying to find somebody to take that off of my hands. That's a really nice couch, but it was too big for my place. So I've got it sitting out here right now so I can load it up and take it to somebody else's house. And then I've just got a lot of camping gear and stuff. These are my uh, garden boxes. Uh, which I will get planted here probably next month and I just have a couple of raised garden boxes where I plant a salad garden I don't need a big garden anymore. I used to plant a bigger garden with sweet corn and potatoes and all that sort of stuff But where it's just me living here anymore I don't really need all that stuff So I just have a couple of these for a salad garden Which I love to just come out and pick fresh and eat then there's my porch and every house has to have a porch If you don't have a porch, it's not really a house in my opinion. Okay, I'm sorry It's just not so my porch is seven foot by 14 foot uh, and it's all rustic uh, pipe peeled logs and stuff like that and I need to do a little bit of work on it because uh, over time it's kind of got tipped over a little bit to one side so I need to anchor it back up. That's one of my projects this year is i got to pull that porch back up straight and shim underneath this side because what happens is I had a little bit of a flooding problem right here and it let one of the posts settle and so as it has it's kind of shifted away and I had to build the porch as a freestanding unit so that it wasn't considered part of the, the uh, square feet of the property and that reduced my uh, property taxes. And so we'll talk about that a little bit here. Now this is the power pole that was here. And as you can see, there's no meter on it or anything anymore. But because we paid, back then we had to pay for our own power poles, I, I grabbed all the wire that went with it and hauled it back up to my place so they couldn't claim the wire was theirs when they come and took that transformer out. And then up above, I do have a uh, wind turbine. You can see up there, I've got a 400 watt wind turbine. However, because we rarely get enough wind here to make it worth it, that wind turbine really hasn't been uh, profitable. It hasn't supported itself because we just don't get enough wind here to make it worth it. Uh, but I still wanted to get one and put it up and just so I could explain to people how they work because maybe you get a lot more wind and you can use them in your area. So then, uh, let's see. The cabin is built, uh, it's 2 by 6 lumber for the most part, uh, R19 insulation. And I used uh, T111 siding on it, uh, which was, is a good, thick, solid siding. And uh, it's very well insulated. I can tell you this. I can heat this place up with just a 1500 BTU uh, propane heater. And I just use storage uh, tanks that I can go and refill myself. 20-pound storage propane storage tanks. And I've got about five of them there. In the wintertime, I usually have uh, four of them filled up and one on. That way, that will last me a month. In the wintertime, I go through about one 20-pound tank a week, and that's for cooking, uh, heating water, and heating the cabin. Uh, now, during the summer, I'll go through about maybe two of those tanks the entire summer. It doesn't use very much power at all. And then I've got a uh, uh, just a bunch of crap on my porch, mostly. I've got, <laughs> I need to clean up my porch. Uh, now, there, there's an important feature. I've got an uh, air turbine. You can see that turbine there up on top of my roof. Now that is to expel the hot air. So when it gets hot here, I open up this door, which is shaded on this side, and I open it up the door on the back side, which I'll show you. And then the, the cool air from outside comes in, and it pushes the warm air up and out through that air turbine vent. So it's natural air conditioning, okay? And so that's how I keep my place cool. Uh, and then if it gets real hot, I've got a small uh, swamp cooler in the cabin, which I showed you in another video, that helps to cool it down another 10, 15 degrees, which is plenty comfortable here. In this area, we're in a high desert area. We still have snow, which you might be able to see back there. Uh, this area rarely gets above 100 degrees. Maybe a couple of days out of the year might get above 100. The rest of the time, our hottest temperatures are maybe 95 right around there so we don't have really really hot temperatures here but we get really cold winters we can get minus 20 here uh, pretty easy now one of the projects that I'm working on this is in the backyard uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about and somebody actually gave me the idea in one of my other videos I had planned on building an addition I talked about building an addition off this backyard but if I do that, it's going to raise up my property taxes, and I just really don't need the extra room, and it'd just be more uh, space to heat. And so instead, what I'm thinking is I'm going to build 
a mud room with a place for my tub and I'll show you my tub here in a minute now what this is, is I've got got plenty of room here to build there's my chicken coop uh, plastic chickens have been in there all winter there's the other chicken hello girl what you doing there's the other chicken and there's my well and you can see it's a free free flowing well and I just leave it free flowing out here and then I hook up a hose that goes into a water tank my cabin is set up just like an RV so I can just flow it right into my cabin uh, when I need to fill up a 35 gallon water tank the rest of the time it runs out here so that it keeps everything wet and I have a little bit of a water uh, pond back there eventually I want to block this all in and I need to do something with this backyard anyway so I think this is going to be my project this year I had a limb fall down here last year last fall and I cut the limb down and cut it into pieces but I never did get it hauled out of here so now I need to get this hauled out of here because I'm going to work on this back porch and there's my back door and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a uh, I think a six by eight it'll be six by eight along the wall so it'll go six uh, let's see six feet yeah excuse me what the heck am I saying it'll be six foot by four foot or maybe eight foot by four foot it'll go along the door over to here like this and then over on the other side other side and then back up here and it'll be four foot wide and that will give me enough room off this back porch to have a mud porch with a door on it'll have its own separate door on that side I'll be able to come in and take off my cold boots with my snowy coat and stuff like that hang it up in here and then on the end of it I'm going to have my tub because one thing that one regret that I have when I built this place and I left myself enough room for it my bathroom is big enough to put in a bathtub but instead I got a free shower base and I put in a shower instead of putting in a tub and I love to take a bath you know I just love to soak uh, it's good for my back and good for my legs when I'm feeling tired and sore and everything like that so I really regret that I didn't put in a tub so here's the plan I'm going to build this off this back porch mud room uh, four foot by probably eight foot or seven foot six I don't know I haven't decided on it yet I haven't worked out all the details It'll, I'll take that off and then I'll just cover that over with a porch and it will be a freestanding porch so they can't say that it's a, a part of the house so I don't have to get permits and it shouldn't cost me any more on property taxes unless they come back here and look they won't even know it's built here so then this is my tub and some of you guys remember this because I did a, a video <coughs> on my uh, Japanese hot tub and this is the tub it's actually a cattle trough it's 40 inches by 24 or 20 23 inches across and it's actually quite deep now it's a mess inside it because I got to clean it all out and I'll explain how that happened uh, but uh, this was set up I had this set up and was working perfectly for my hot tub and you can sit I one person could sit in there very comfortably water comes right up to your armpits and you can you can take a full bath in there so that's that's a great size for a bathtub and it already has a drain pipe on it down there so I'm going to put that in one end of my mud room and uh, hook it up install it so that I can use it as both a hot tub and just a regular tub when I want to get to when I want to go soak and have a hot uh, bath so I'm going to use that I'm going to continue to use that for that purpose now what happened is walk around here oh this is my old <coughs> excuse me we've got uh, pollen in the air and it's really making me sneeze and cough this is my old camp chair and I do a lot of our outdoor stuff and, and like I said I take the Jeep out and go riding around and then I've got these uh, water tanks these are for irrigation uh, if I need to store water most of the time I just run it out of the ditch but if I need to store water I can use the overflow from my well pump it into these and then use just a uh, solar panel on a 12 volt pump to run some uh, irrigation so I can irrigate everything and then I've got uh, fruit trees I planted these a few years ago and I just finally got new apples I got a couple of small apples there's a, a sugar sweet a couple of sugar sweet apple trees over there and they they should start producing this year I'm hoping and then this apple tree was a different variety I don't remember what type but I think I got it it's in the drain field from my overflow and I think it got too wet and I think it, it the roots couldn't handle the extra water so I'm gonna have to rethink that situation I think that tree is dead unless it comes back this year uh, I think it's dead and I'll probably have to take that one out and rethink where I put them so note to self do not put trees where they get too wet okay that's not good for them fruit trees uh, the, the roots tend to rot so another project I've been saying this for like three years I need to get rid of this wood pile this is all the stuff that I had to cut out of here when I was uh, first moved here and I needed some place to put it and so it just kind of ended up here now the birds love it and the cats love it and the dog gets in there and I get uh, quail uh, in there all the time so I've kind of created a natural habitat for wild animals on my place 
uh, but it was never intended to be that so I'm either going to get rid of it or burn it this year probably have it hauled off it's springtime here so usually our local uh, dump uh, provides a great big dumpster out on the road and we can go throw all kinds of stuff in it. and I got a bunch of trash and that's my project for this year you can see what happened to my greenhouse and I'm disappointed I had a really nice greenhouse built here last year with that hot tub in it and had it all set up like that and I, I loved it it was just fantastic but I, I made the mistake of pulling the plastic too tight and the zippers ripped apart and we got a real heavy wind and it just ripped that plastic to shred if I had put it together and allowed enough uh, room in the plastic to absorb the the wind pressure it wouldn't have done that so it's my fault it's not a fault of the manufacturer it was my fault for uh, trying to tighten it down too much and so I, I got the plastic too tight and it blew off and it uncovered everything and I was so disgusted because it was late fall when it happened I was just so disgusted I gave up on everything <laughs> so I said to hell with it I'll worry about you next year and so I've got all this crap that was in my greenhouse that got blown over and and just laying around that I've got to deal with so that's one of my projects I got to clean this all up and the wind also we had some really bad wind this last year wind also tore up my uh, swing so I'm either gonna fix that or cut it into firewood I don't know what I'm gonna do with it and uh, so one of my projects I got to get do is I've got to get my uh, trailers out and that's what I'm probably gonna do today so I got to get one of my little trailers I've got a couple of them there and I'm gonna get that little trailer out air up the tires make sure it's in good shape hook onto that with my truck and then I'm just gonna start loading up some of this junk that I need to get rid of so that when they put the big dumpster out here this spring I can go haul off some trash so that's the other uh, main project that I'm going to start working on here. That and my back porch planning on how I'm going to do that mudroom. So here's another view of the property. Like I said, it's just about an acre. And uh, it's really nice. And I set this up intentionally. If you wonder why I put the cabin back there in the corner. I did that intentionally in case I decided at some time, or somebody wanted to, build a regular house in here then they have this whole front area in here where it would be a really nice place for a standard house. And what I thought is that, you know, I could live in my cabin and if one of my kids wanted to build, my son wants to build a house here at some point, he could go ahead and start building and, and have a house there and I would just keep living in my cabin. And, or if I pass away or something like that, somebody wants to build a house here, then the cabin would make a really nice a workshop or, you know, a bunkhouse for the kids because that's all we lived in was we, when we was kids. So, that's a tour of my property. A little basketball hoop there for shooting hoop when somebody comes over, my nephews or somebody come over. And, uh, let's see, that's about all I can tell you about the place. I've got a little place over there for sitting and having a barbecue with family under that tree. And then, oh, I guess I could show you this. This is my solar composting toilet, which I've discussed in videos and it's in my ebook. And uh, this thing has just worked perfectly. I've never had a problem with it. This property already had a trailer house on it a long time ago when it belonged to my brother. And uh, he built a uh, three-partition uh, septic tank. Back then you could build your own septic tanks. And so he built a three-partition septic tank in here. When I moved in here, I had to clean it all out and everything. And then I built this solar compost over it. And what it is, is just a cover with a couple of windows. And I got the windows uh, given to me, bartered them for some work I did. And what happens is, is I dump the... Uh, composting toilet into one section of it down here and then the sun heats that up and it evaporates off all the moisture and it, it evaporates off all the moisture out of the system through that vent pipe over there and so there really isn't any need for an overflow or the drain field that they put on conventional septic tanks because because it's just one person or even two people all the moisture gets evaporated off it just goes up into the air the drain field is there just in case. It's like an emergency thing. You have to have it. But I have never yet even used up one side of the baffle. It never goes over into the second baffle or the third baffle because all the moisture is evaporated off and all it leaves is just a little teeny amount of dried uh, compost in the bottom of the tank, which in most cases just desiccates and, and, and uh, composts down to nothing. Okay, so this system is basically self-contained. It does have a drain field that goes out that direction, but it's self-contained. The drain field is there just for emergency if it happened to overflow, which it just never will. And so I built that out of just some uh, recycled lumber and a couple old windows on top of a septic tank. And that is my solar composting system, uh, septic system, and it works perfectly. I've never had any complaints with it at all. And I uh, just come out once a week, usually I dump the uh, compost and toilet out here. Uh, it takes about five minutes, and, and that's it. I'm done. That's with the system.
So that's the rest of the property. Old Taz, she's saying, I need an adventure. Throw me a Frisbee. She's such a good dog. And every place should have a homestead. And uh, I raise, the only animals I raise now are dogs and chickens. Uh, I, I, I know people ask me, why don't you have goats or something like that? Because, because goats stink. <laughs> and I don't have enough room for, for uh, other animals. So I just don't raise goats, and I don't I don't want to raise cattle or sheep. I can if I wanted to. I can put some cattle back there in my brother's field. He just got rid of a couple of horses because they were a pain in the ass. And so he's getting a couple of cows. So maybe I'll put in a feeder calf or something like that this spring with his, his stock, and we share that property back there. Okay, folks. All right. So that's my property. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got a, a, to look and maybe get some ideas for your own homestead properties around here. And uh, thanks for coming by, sitting on my porch spell. Uh, always uh, welcome to come by my website, simpsolarhomesteading.com. Go by there, look at the ebooks, look at the plans that I already have available. And uh, you, there's lots of information there for how to set up your solar systems, products that I've used that I can recommend, things like that. I am working on a new uh, book, ebook that's going to. Uh, include information about Thoreau and my observations about his life. If you're not familiar with Thoreau, by the time you get done watching the next video, you'll have some idea who Thoreau is and uh, his inspiration on my life. So anyway, thanks everybody and uh, have a great day. Bye.